I'm really excited to be here because today I'm going to talk about a topic, and the topic is mentorship. You see, it's never clearly been defined. And then furthermore, once we define it, we can talk about how to activate it. Fact, 90% of people who are mentored when they're young grow to become mentors. It was Sir Isaac Newton that said, if you've seen further, it's because you've been standing on the shoulders of giants. Now, I'm a fan of Isaac Newton, but I like to edit that and revise it a bit and say, you know what, you can reach for anything if you stand on the shoulders of giants. Understanding that there, this very principle, we can understand that, for one, you want to make sure that you're standing on the shoulders of giants so that you can reach for anything. And two, you want to make sure that you are a giant so that people can stand on your shoulders. Today we're going to go through three phases of mentorship. So let's define it first. By definition, mine anyway, mentorship is to be influenced by individuals, ideals, and society. And you see, it starts from the moment that you open your eyes into the world, all the way until you close your eyes to this world. We're being influenced. So with that said, I want to go into this first realm. When we go into the first realm, this realm, it is unconscious mentorship. Now, when I think about unconscious mentorship, it's called unconscious because it's like a preset table, like a preset menu. You didn't choose the plates that's on it, these are the plates that are basically given to you. So we understand that we have good examples, bad examples, and if you're fortunate enough, you have really good, bad examples, <laughs> right? And if we understand what that means, that just means that you may not know exactly what to do, but you know exactly what not to do. And so, of course, I have to make sure that I can give you a story so we can understand clearly how does this unconscious mentor thing work. I'll tell you a story. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was born, I was born with drugs in my system. You see, my mother, she's a professional shoplifter, and my father, well, he was just absent. And they just weren't around much, and I had drugs in my system, and they just decided to give me to my grandparents. Thank God for grandparents. So as time goes on, I remember I didn't choose this prefix menu. This is just the plates on my table that I was given. I remember being in second grade, and I was reading, and my teacher, she said, uh, Sean, read. And I said, OK. And I began to read, and I said, is land. Stop that. Is land. What am I trying to say? Right. She put me in special ed. Interesting. I remember when I was 11 years old, this is a prefix menu. I was 11 years old, and it was the first time my older brother Mike taught me how to cut crack. I started young. I was excited about it. And I remember, at 11 years old, another thing, my mother, she's a professional shoplifter. And my mom, you know, she would have me at 11 years old drive her all around the country so that I can just be her decoy. I didn't choose these things. This is my prefix menu. I, I didn't choose it, I promise. So time goes on. I get about 12 years old, and this beautiful person who was my grandmother, who was a rock in my life, she died. I had no more rules anymore. Everything that was to be was up to me. Time goes on. I get to about high school, and man, I'll tell you, I remember being 15 years old, and when I was 15, at this point, when I say I didn't have the, the guidance that I needed, you know, my older brother that taught me how to cut crack when I was 11, he was killed in a drug transaction. His twin was already dead. My father, who didn't see me much, couldn't see me anymore because he was deceased as well. My mother, now you see her, now you don't. Uh, she's kind of like a magician in more ways than one. And so it's interesting because my grandmother's not here, so this prefix menu was kind of interesting. And they left me a gift in the form of a younger brother, so I had to take care of him. And I did the best way I could. I didn't ask for this, I promise. These are just the things that are influencing me. So I remember being 15 years old because this is when it happened. This 
is when I met her. When I say she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my life, she was my high school counselor. Her name was Miss Champion. Oh boy. <laughs> she was absolutely amazing. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday, and she believed in me. She understood my significant emotional events in my life. I was vulnerable, and she filled void, so she was able to reach me. My mind was open, so she was able to teach me. I was so receptive, she was able to mold me. She told me I would go on to be her Michigan man. I didn't know people in college like that, but I went on to get accepted and graduate from the University of Michigan. Go blue. Go college. So after this experience, it made me just think about the fact that, you know what, I don't want to be unconscious anymore. I'm not in control of these people. I didn't, look, I didn't choose Miss Champion. She chose me. Life kind of happened that way, and I held on to some good examples, but I needed a bit more. So I wanted to move into not an unconscious realm of mentorship with a prefix menu. I wanted to move into a realm where I could choose those influences in my life. Phase two. In this realm, what we have, we have informal mentorship and formal mentorship. Informal mentorship, one of the coolest things ever. You get to choose a la carte what's on your menu. So now, what you could do is, number one, your friends, they're now friend tours. A merger between friend and mentor, because everyone that you're around, they have something that's great about them, so you're going to add it to you. Friend tours, number one, we love this. What else can we grab? Oh, yeah, whatever I'm reading, whatever I'm watching, whatever I'm listening to, the movies, it doesn't matter, YouTube, my favorite websites, all these things, you can see a nice list here. This is all a matter of informal mentorship. But I want it more because I need not only these things to kind of guide me and remind me of my ideal self, but I need to also make sure that I have people that hold me accountable. And holding me accountable, you have formal mentorship. And with that, there's three different levels to this. You have examples, directors, sponsors. Examples, you can simply watch them. Directors, well, you know them. They give you directions, and they believe in your potential. And sponsors, they believe in more than your potential. They believe in you. And they'll make their name synonymous to yours, open up doors for you. I like sponsors. But now let's move on because, OK, how do I get that? I like to call it playing catch. This is one example. Playing catch is just like this. You see the dog, you see the man. Understand that the dog is the mentee, the man is the mentor that the mentee wants. So what happens? OK, well. The dog goes over to the mentor, drops the ball. The ball is a question. Drops the ball, hangs around the mentor's legs, kind of looks up a little sheepishly. <laughs> the mentor picks it up, get away from me, little dog, and throws the ball. That's your answer. Get out of here. The dog. Now, the mentee, it's your job to go and get it, bring it back. And when you bring it back, that's something that most mentees don't do. Now, the mentor is like, huh. Look at this. Wow. Matter of fact, you build trust. That example becomes a director. Look, you got potential. Look, uh, try this. Throws it further. That dog goes and get it, brings it back. I believe in you now. As a matter of fact, I believe in you so much, I'm going to introduce you to more people. Hey, look at this. Will somebody look at this dog over here? Look, I need you to just throw it anywhere you want to. Watch, it's just going to get it. <laughs> this is an awesome realm. So now, what's cool about it, because you have this situation. Now you have a sponsor. So I like to make sure that you can even have an example of this here, because I don't believe I could just tell you something like that without a, a beautiful application. So I had a mentee. This kid, his name is Roland. Roland, when he was born, his father, he just was never in his life. He was incarcerated. His mom had bouts of cancer. He's from Brooklyn, the same projects as Jay-Z. And I remember he was going to high school, and his brother was shot and killed. His mom didn't like that situation, so she said, you know what? I'm going to take you out of New York. We're going to take you to Virginia. You'll go to school there. He went to school there in the ninth grade. He failed every single class his first year. She said, you know what? We're going back to New York. This is not good here. We'll go back to New York. She went to New York, went to the South Bronx, put him in a school. In that school, I happened to be a math teacher there with the mentorship program. So I see Roland. 
Say, I like you, kid. Get in the program. Okay, sir. Got in the program. You know, when I saw him, I said, you know what? There's some interesting things about this kid. And from the jump, I said, you know what? I understand his significant emotional events. I saw his vulnerability, and I wanted to make sure I could feel voids to reach him. His mind was open, so I was able to teach him. He was so receptive, I was able to mold him. He graduated as one of the top three males with respect to GPA, and he was going to college and bring, making a brand new standard for his family. I was excited. He went off to college, and I left. I left the math department. I went back home to Michigan. And I'm so excited. We're keeping in touch with one another. <laughs> and as he's doing this thing, he went to this school. I wasn't really a fan of it. I said, man, you know what? We talked at the end of the semester. I said, hey, listen, I think you can be a Michigan man. This is a wonderful program. You can be in the program for two years. So once you get into that program and do it for two years, you do well. You get involved in activities, you can go right on over to the University of Michigan. I said, you can stay here for the summer, and hey, you know, and then you can just make it happen. He said, okay, big bro, I'll call you back. I said, fine. I hung up the phone. He called me three hours later. said, hey, big bro, hey, yep, so I got my financial aid fixed. I'll be there next Tuesday. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that uh, so fast. But he was ready. The thing is, you see, I threw the ball, he went and got it. So he came and lived with me for the summer, and I'll tell you what, he did his thing. He had about a 3.7, he applied to Michigan, and you guys know what happened. What happened? He got denied. I threw the ball, he tried to bring it back, and he said, the ball is deflated, it don't work. <laughs> I, it's not working for me. Throw it again. Get another ball, something. <laughs> we said, try again. He said, I'm going to try again. Between his denial and his acceptance with the scholarship, he actually went out and did what he needed to do. And he even came across some 70-year-old man who had stage 4 cancer and decided that the, he was going to be the man to raise money for him so that his family would have a house to live in even if the man, when the man passed on. So in four days, he raised $102,000 for this man. Applied to the University of Michigan again, like, hey guys, remember me? Got a award from the governor if you, if you missed it on ABC World News, just <laughs> make it short. I just wanna make sure you saw, here's a link. But nevertheless, Roland, we talked at this first semester, he got all A's and a C, it was awesome. And he came to me, <clears throat> right after he just came back from Rome this summer. And he said, hey, big bro, you know what? I've been talking to my friend in New York. You know, he said, you see, I understand his significant emotional events. He's vulnerable, and I want to fill some voids. His mind is open, so I want to teach him. He's very receptive, so I want to mold him. I'm going to bring my friend from New York City over here so he can do the same program that I just went into and make sure that he could be in the same place as me. You see, mentorship, you go from the unconscious mentorship to conscious mentorship to creating consciousness. The beautiful thing is, I sat there and I saw Roland, I said, wow. <laughs> well, you're doing what I'm supposed to do. That's absolutely amazing. So I bring you back to this one. 90% of people who are mentored when they are young grow up, turn around, and become mentors themselves. I see it in Roland. It's in me. And Roland and I both say thank you, Miss Champion.